life. Um, what I think he was going to talk about was CART, uh, which is a new version control system that we've built at Coordinates and that we use heavily in the back end and it'll be the way we move forward with most of our data publishing in the future. Uh, it's open source. This is where you can download it, cartproject.org. It's built for Linux and Macs and Windows, so most bases covered. What is it? It's uh, a version controlling system designed to work with geospatial data. So it wraps around Git. It, anything you can do in Git, you can do in Cart. Uh, like Git, it's a command line interface. So once you've come here, downloaded it, you're ready to go. Essentially, the workflow goes, open up a terminal, terminal into a new folder that's empty. You'll do a Cart init that makes that into a Git-like repository. And then the next step is to get data into it. So you're going to go cart import and then a path to the data set, run that. That's going to pull the data into the repository where you can start version controlling it. That's one option for getting data in there. The other option is you can do a clone from any of the coordinate sites. Um, so in the new UI, which you can access through coordinates.com, you'll go find the layer that you're interested in, cruise into the data set, you'll find the SSH URL in there, copy that back to that terminal folder, you're just going to go cart clone URL. That's going to pull that entire repo down into your local repository as a geo package. Uh, you also get the entire history with it. Um, and what we've done is all of the layers that are on coordinates, we have mirrored into these Git-like repositories. We call them cart repositories. What we used to call change sets are now commits. So every time a publisher had pushed a new layer up, We've pulled all those out, put them into commits. They have their crypto hash numbers. You can reset back to a point in time. Um, yeah, so that's how it works. I think where Hamish was going is that we've also released a uh, QGIS plugin. It's available through the QGIS plugin manager. Um, so you can jump in there, and I'm about to explain what the workflow looks like. Um, so that's how you, I've explained how you would get data into the repo. You can do exactly the same thing using the QGIS plugin and it allows you to manage your data locally and essentially version control it. So you'd, what you would do is you'd take the layer or layers that are in the repo, put them into a QGIS project, do a bunch of editing across all the different layers, um, then jump back into either the plugin, if you're in QGIS, or into command line. You're just going to do a commit with a message, and then that will wrap those edits into a new commit, stored in the, and you can then do a cart log, which will show you the history of the data um, all the changes that have been made, all the commits that have been made over time. So that's how it works, and then I thought sort of just to help you sort of understand it in my don't have any slides environment, um, we have um, done an install for Waikato District Council where they are using CART to manage their district plan. It's a particularly good fit for them because uh, with district plans you have to be able to go back in time and give the rationale as to why any changes were made to any attributes or any geographies. They were running a real complicated spine system in SQL Server that they actually never had to test, so they didn't know whether it really worked. Um, so what they're doing now is they've split all their independent data sets into repos. I think they've got 100 of them. They all live up on coordinates.com, so think um, GitHub. Being open source, you don't have to put your data up there. You can manage it all locally entirely. You don't need to be with coordinates for this. but. If you wanted to be using the distributed part of distributed version control, it's going to be much easier to have a remote repo hosting the data, a bunch of people pull it down. The other benefit there is any layers that we host on coordinates, you can access through cloning. So say if you wanted the primary parcels from LINs, you can go cart clone the URL for the primary parcels, that's going to pull that data set down. And then if you wanted to you can, you can go into, we've also released an app which does the same thing, which is free, um, so no license associated with it. You could then just go open up that repo and it'll, if there have been changes, um, you'll be notified. There's a little apply updates. You just hit apply updates. It's going to pull all the updates down. So it gives you a real easy way to keep local data synced up with data that's up in the cloud. So um, yeah, and then the other thing Waikato do is they publish their layers they like Git. You can create branches, push your branches back up to the repo. You can publish that branch. Um, so in the district plan, they've got phases that they release, and sometimes the phase will jump ahead, so they'll branch off the main trunk, uh, publish that, and then when that gets accepted into the operative data set, they just simply do a merge. It'll, we've got a conflict resolution flow to deal with that. Um, but yeah, so that's how it works. You're welcome to check it out in QGIS, and um, hopefully I've given you enough information to give it a bit of a crank. So thank you very much.
Um, well, cut is basically a zingot. Do you mean would you? Let's say you have a project like code and data, and you're tracking the code with Git, and you're tracking the zero data with Chart. Would that take work? Uh, that would take more work. Um, at the moment, a Cart repository holds data only. Um, we're basically extending it out so that we can currently track schematic changes, metadata, and data. First cab off the rank was Vector. Um, next is Point Clouds, which we're releasing really shortly. And then next after that will be Raster. Um, and then we will look at how you might combine other file types, documents, and so forth into the same model. It's potentially doable. There's a fair bit of magic going on in the cart repositories. So um, like what in theory you could put a cart repo into a Git host, but you would have to do some things to make it work. So yeah, there's been a couple of years of R&D in it that you'd have to reverse engineer probably. So yeah. Thank you for the questions. Yeah, sorry about that. Um,